There are two kinds of people in this world, those who talk and those who listen. Though most people can only seem to maintain one of these two attributes, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're any good at it. Those who talk may not always say what they are feeling, and those who listen may not always fully understand what they are hearing. I guess in a way, we're all just a bunch of broken pieces, trying to find the one that matches our pattern. The one that'll click into place and make us whole. Make us... complete. The sad clown thought he had found that person. One day, when at the end of his rope, she spoke to him. The one audience member that he had watched from afar. Just what was it that made her so special to him? Maybe it was because she was the only one who laughed with him rather than at him. Maybe it was because she was the only one who would truly look at him and not his performances. Or maybe he was just an idiot who fell in love. All it took was a simple act of kindness to completely win him over. It was an act that he had performed many a time, but this was the first time he had ever been on the receiving end. Common courtesy wasn't so common to this broken down jester, and when surrounded by people who would continually shame him just for being born, it was her who stepped up to the plate and was willing to tell him that it wasn't true. She comforted him and stood by him tears and all. Never in his wildest dreams did he ever imagine a day like this would come. But now that it was here, what next? How does he say thank you? How can he talk to her afterwards? Will this moment of safety and togetherness come to an end soon? How can he prevent it? How can the jester act natural? All of a sudden, the world went dark. Everywhere he turned, he saw nothing but darkness. The only thing in sight was her, just standing there, facing away from him. And then she slowly started to walk away. The jester tried to say something. He tried to move. He tried to do anything. But he had never performed in front of a crowd of one before. It was the most terrifying performance of his life. He felt so alone, yet also like he was constantly being watched. He felt fine in front of a crowd where attention was scattered. He could shout aloud and expect no reply in return. But talking one on one? The jester had no prior experience in such a thing. It was just him and her. No one else to stop him. Nothing else on his mind. All he had to do was literally anything. Anything that would make her stay. It was just him and her. Just him and her. Just him and her. <sighs> Please. Don't go. <sighs> and just like that, she was gone. And we're back to old age. Whoa. I forgot it worked. Does it usually work like that? Atlanta Center, Cactus 135, cruising flight level 360. Cactus 
Cactus 135, Atlanta Center, Roger, Al Altimeter setting 3017, have a good flight. Altimeter 3015, thank you, Cactus 3135. Well, we got a nice tailwind going on for us. Sir, now what are we... So, now that we're in cruise, I can't read. I just wanted to say, it's an honor to be here as your first officer on your final flight. This may be my first time as a, as a first officer, but I won't let you down. Heh, <laughs> it's all good. Rather poetic, really. Passing the baton and all. But you should know. As my co-pilot, there are only two things I ever wanted to hear from you. Two things, sir? Yep. There, yes, Captain, and landing gear down. You're funny, sir. What did I just say? Yes, Captain. Huh, of course I'm just messing with you. Just reminded me of back when I did my first flay as the first officer, that's all. Man, my captain then was a crazy mess. Yes, Captain. Hmm, you know I just said I was kidding, right? Yes, Captain. Okay. Hey, I'm gonna let my wife and son come in for a bit if you don't mind. It's my final flight and all. They're not gonna get this view again. Yes, Captain. May I take your hat, sir? May I take your hat, sir? Irene, could you bring my family in? Thank you. Didn't think we'd be exploring an airplane. Though I guess it would, does make sense that he wound up becoming a pilot. And wow, it went already. Flight regulations were still so chill back in the day, huh? Eh, times change. Uh, let's see. Very tiny plane. Then again, they all seem kind of tiny when you're on the inside. Can't interact with any of them. Guess they're just gonna go inside. So, what do you two say? One last round? Is it alright with the management? Already approved. Special occasion and all. You heard him, Ma. Go, go, go! I don't think he's that young, so maybe I should tone up his voice a bit. Uh, let's see, nothing else in here. Just go back and forth, I suppose. So, you gonna miss the views? From the big birds? Sure. But it's not like I'm giving up the sky. Oh, don't go renting those small planes. I don't trust you flying in them. Speaking of, I wish they gave you a bigger plane for the last flight of your career. Like one of those monster double-deckers. <laughs> I asked for this one in particular myself. I had my first flight with this airline in the with the airline in this. It was a different time back then. A time with lots of peanuts. I miss them so much. You know, Dad. All these years of flying and you never told me why you chose to be a pilot in the first place. Oh, I haven't, huh? Psst, don't tell your mother, but it was to impress a girl. Yeah, did it work? Sure, I guess. Oh, please. With the way your father acted, I doubt he dated anyone at all when we met. Shots fired, Dad. Hey, now, Fia, don't go spreading false rumors in front of our son. I'll have you know that I was quite the stud back in the days. Captain, just a reminder that we've that we're on the record for the black box. <laughs> oh, thanks for the reminder. Let the record show that my biceps are out of this world. No, no, they really aren't. Oh, but they are. When I pulled the yoke off, uh, when I pulled the, that yoke on takeoff earlier, I practically lifted the entire plane off the ground. Isn't that right, Peyton? Yes, Captain. Yeah, well, let me tell you a story about the one time involving a jar of pickles. Okay, we need to maintain a sterile cockpit for landing. Let's uh, get you two back to your seats. Uh, 
Off we go now. Shoo, shoo. Sir, we're not landing for another couple of hours. I know. Well, that was pretty funny. Who is that? Is that his wife still there? Or I don't know. So, uh, are you coming with or what? Oh, I know that's Neil. Of course it is. Nah, I like this view. I thought you were more acrophobic. Only when I'm not inside a plane. Yeah, like falling off of a lighthouse. How many of you... How about you go wrap up this memory and I'll join you shortly after. Are you serious? I'm on, it's on a loop. Yeah, but the picture from the seat's angle is just absolutely divine. In fact, I pity you or anyone who can't see the way the horizon meets the... Don't give me that. What the fruit? Is it a... Is that a cabbage? Don't give me that cabbage. Okay, then. And everyone's lined up for some reason. Thank you for the lovely flight, sir. Cheers, hope you have a nice day. Hello, little one. Hope you enjoyed the... The landing stunk! Uh, yeah. Sorry, it was a little rough. Not one of my better landings. The wind was... Received no regret badly. I doubt that's his ultimate regret. Though he said there were a lot of little things, so maybe he would want his last flight to be perfect. And the last line in Colin's career didn't quite hit the mark. Well, everyone's safe and sound, so I guess that's good enough. God, I remember like back in the day, um, sinking airports were like. My favorite thing about the airports was that like they gave you like these box lunch. Also, these are a lot of stinking people. Uh, I'm gonna wait here just to see how many they are. Um, there were just, uh, one of my favorite things about airports was that they gave you little box lunches before you went onto the plane instead of just, like, getting a little bag of peanuts, uh, or whatever during the flight. You got, like, a box lunch before the flight. It was, like, in a container, uh, right before you go through that little tunnel that enters, uh, you into the plane. And it was just, it was super exciting because, like, it came with, like, these McDonald's toys that were exclusive to the airport. I've probably gone on this tangent before because, like, I, I feel like I've been talking about McDonald's, like, all the stinking time in these videos. But, um, they had these exclusive McDonald's airplane toys, and they were just so stinking cool. It was, like, Ronald McDonald in, a, like, a car and an airplane. Just, like, they were so awesome, and I really wish I had them still. Because they were just really stinking cool, and I love McDonald's so stinking much, even though I'm a vegetarian. And that food is literally Satan. But I just remember that so stinking well. And also, um airport food in general like it's a lot of people say it's like infamously terrible but like i love airport food like i'm just always so excited to eat the airport i remember la uh a year ago or something there was a place that sold mac and grilled cheese like i only saw it on twitter before in my dreams and stuff and i just had it, it was amazing and then like i went back uh a few months ago or whatever and it was the same airport in the same area and like it was Weird, I went to the place that had the mac and grilled cheese originally, but they were no longer selling it. I asked them if they still had it. They seemed like a little shocked that like someone would remember a menu item from an airport restaurant. But they were like, oh yeah, we don't do that anymore. That was a different company or something like that. And I was like heartbroken. And it was, yeah, I hope I could find a mac and grilled cheese somewhere else someday. And now to talk about sticking McDonald's and food porn. Let's uh, get the heck out of here because it doesn't look like this uh, group is going to be clearing up anytime soon. Well, it's certainly the same size as the tunnel, that's for sure. Oh, a fellow a cellist, huh? Here, let me get that for you. Thank you, sir. Yay, are you good at the cello? Ha, huh, not really. My wife is the real musician of the family. Beautiful instrument, though. I loved playing it as a kid. Received no cello. I assume that'll be the memento. Uh, Colin loved playing it as a kid. All right, then. Uh, yes it is. Should we go get Neil? Eh, I'll leave him. Alright, what do we got here? Uh, continuing to get a bit more complex. Uh, let's see, do that. There you go. Alright, very nice. Uh, I guess we're gonna activate it. 
Sup. Dude, I was just about to... <laughs> what, is he gonna get mad that we, like, didn't go back for him or something? And back to childhood. Uh... How do we skip the childhood memories again? And this time, the memento isn't even in that book. Is there something wrong with the machine, Neil? Huh? It's not the machine. At least, I don't think it is. Well, I guess at least we know that we can go back now. Let's just hope it doesn't interfere with the finishing this with finishing this job. Relax, we'll manage. My theory was that I think I could disprove that theory right now, but my theory was that like he was in some sort of coma or something and he didn't have any sort of memories between childhood and adulthood. But considering we were just in the pilot part, uh maybe that's not the case. Is there literally anything else left, Mrs. Miller? Nope. This is your instrument. Get used to it. Received no cello forced upon him. Love playing cello as a kid, my butt. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Wow, you belong in a grade school. Your childish jabs aside, Ava. And on an unrelated note, this place kind of makes me feel like I'm on the set of a, some indie French film. Uh, what? What about this possibly makes you feel that way? I don't know. Just a feeling. Ooh, nice music. Uh, cello and cello. Oh, uh, Colin loved playing cello as a child. Colin hated playing cello as a child. Who do I believe? If you wanted something else, you should have lined up earlier. It's just gonna look around a bit. As opposed to doing anything else, because, like, literally all we do is look around a bit. Or a lot of bit. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's anything in here right now. Bunch of people. Hey, don't push. I call dibs on the violin. It's so light to carry. I'm gonna get the flute. It fits in my backpack. Alright, he's out of there. Uh, we also have Colin back here. What's he doing? Counting dirt, I guess. Okay, there's the memento. Alright then. At least we'll know where to go after we're done here. Uh, I assume we can't talk to him anymore. Did you see that? Is he carrying that thing or is it carrying him? Looks like just a floating case from behind. Just keep on going. I like this music. This reminds me a lot of Professor Layton. Uh, Professor Layton. I don't want to get on a tangent about that. Just like, uh, are you guys enjoying Lady Layton? I haven't finished it yet. I was hoping I could finish it soon, but it's just not interesting me. Wow, this is awkward to watch. Ava, why do why do we get all these losers as our clients? Maybe because you're here, moron. Oh uh, well, that's a nice compliment under Gauss's law for magnetism. What? Uh, let's see. Maybe you're saying that she's also a moron or loser or whatever because they're connected or something like that. Doesn't seem like there's anything else. We need two more links, though. Hmm. Anything at all. Doesn't seem like it. I like how realistic the screaming is. I don't know why. It's like, it's annoying, but it sounds like it would. Uh, in this sort of situation. Or environment, I suppose. I also like how it's a tree and a locker. Uh, huh. I have a feeling these aren't the exact replicas from the actual setting. It's as if those memories took quite the creative liberty in mixing things up. Isn't the machine built with a public domain data stabilizer to prevent this? Uh, yeah, but maybe broken? Maybe you're the tech specialist. Yeah, I'll have to look at it afterward. Anything else weird going on? Doesn't seem like it. Hmm. Maybe now we could talk to him? No? 
Oh, hey, now we can go in here. Oh, yeah, sometimes you just need a certain amount of mementos to progress through an area. It's not exactly... It won't be the teleport point. It just... Stu it just limits your freedom, I guess. Colin? Colin! Uh, the answer is C! What? I'll ask you again. What is the radius of the circle? Uh... Where's your head at, Colin? Go stand out in the hall. Is there anything in here of interest to us? Oh, I see sparkly. I guess that's where we're supposed to go. Huh, that could be our ticket out of here. Alright, I think we could reach it if we just... Nah, I got this. Let me find a way. Uh... What, what are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean you'll find a way? What do you- can we just get it, Neil? I don't want your stinking tricks. Hold on, I guess the clock somehow- it's somewhere in this room that we could access the clock. Uh, don't tell me I just have to check every individual desk. Like, just let me reach for it, Neil. Hey, don't make things so difficult. Nothing, nothing, nothing. A whole lot of nothing. A whole new world. A new fantastic point of view. Alright, now watch this. Is that a stinking wand? Wait, you didn't disable the... Mobilarius uh, Teacher's Discus! What the fruit? Can they see that? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! And down. Did you kids just flip and see that? Dude. Reset. Okay, first of all, disable reactive interactivity before you pull that stuff. And second of all, that's not even how, to, how the spell goes. Uh, yeah it is. Did you see that thing fly? They sure did, you village idiot. Oh boy. I don't even know what to say. You've heard it all before and it's to be expected at this point, so I'll stop sounding like a broken record for once in my stinking life and get on with the show. What? Nothing. I guess I was just expecting you to start saying something dumb again. Ava, do you know how draining it is to unleash a Kamehameha and a Hadouken simultaneously? I mean, I know I'm a pro, but even I need my beauty sleep. Something tells me there's gonna be something incredibly hilarious later down the road. Like a Kamehame Hulk smash a duke and I don't know. Oh, my booty hurts. Okay, then this is why I don't record LPs in one sitting, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because I like making bad choices that are bad for my existence and for the fate of the whole project. What the fruit? Okay, then. Uh. Ooh, this is gonna be easy. Nice. Uh, let's keep on going. Um, are we back at the old age period again? Well... Sort of. And here it is, the perfect retirement apartment. We sure are. Okay, I think I got it figured out. Huh? I mean, we haven't just been jumping back and forth randomly, right? There's a pattern to it. With all of our other patients, we began from the most recent point and gradually traced backwards. And in this case, it did start like that. For the first few memories in his oldest time, everything just went normal. 
But then we somehow got sight slingshotted all the way to the earliest accessible memory. So we cleared that and once again leap back to the older times where we left off. Then to the earlier one again moving forward. And then once more with the older time moving backward. These jumps aren't in a random order, and nor do they form just any pattern. It's the pattern of a decaying orbit. It's almost as if we're being pulled in, spiraling toward a gravitational center. A gravitational center, huh? Inappropriate context for physics aside, what do you think is causing this? Some oh-so-deep event of melodramatic angst that traumatized our fine gentlemen? I don't know. Maybe it is a memory of that sort, but... Maybe it's something else. Uh, something else? What could be other- what could be here other than memories? Like I said, I don't know. It's just that we've seen a lot of patients and there's never been a memory that's done this. Alright, I guess at least this one isn't routine then. Hmm, we'll see. Very, very confusing, I'll say that much. Somehow it all makes sense in the end, but it's just so crazy that you just literally have no idea when things are first starting out. Nothing in here. Should probably talk to them. That's probably the main objective. Fred. One bedroom with balcony and there's also an attic for storage. How often do you find attics in an apartment, huh? Not to mention the lake view. I thought the lake was on the other side of the building, though. Yeah, but this unit is on the edge, so you could see it if you hold out a mirror from the balcony. Wow. Here, have a brochure! Sorry about the mess in the living room. The previous owners had to move in a hurry. Just a bunch of boxes. There's a balcony, you said. Yep, it's got a great view, and given how high it is, you could certainly fall in. I mean, yes, balcony. It has that. Okay, then. I know what's happened with my keyboard. Uh, good thing I don't play too many Steam games, otherwise I might actually need to get this checked out. But we'll just deal with it for now. Uh, there's the balcony. But there they are. You said you're a musician, right? This room is perfect for performances. There's also a very little there's very little room for an audience though, so you'd probably be playing alone. Which is kinda sad, but I digress. Just learning about this new apartment. Also careful with those stairs, but y'all seem to have seem to have rocket hips, so no problem there. Rocket hips. Something tells me this is the memento over here. Uh, nope, it's just the brochure. Let's go out here. And as you can see, this is why they call this the Lakeview Residence. I mean, you can't literally see because the lake's behind us on the other side, but if you extend your head off to the balcony on the left, you might be able to see a bit of it. Don't though, you'd fall off. Okay, on we go. Uh, Fred is not very good at his job. So, what do you think? Well, it is a nice and quiet. I like it. Me too, but... I would have liked it better if you just didn't talk, Fred. Yeah, that really didn't help at all. If you weren't my cousin's friend's brother, we would have walked out by now. More like ran out. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm not good at sales. So I'm sorry for being blunt, but are you going to take it? 
because there's a deposit fee, you see, which technically I could elope with, but I promise I... Stop talking. We'll take it. Mm-hmm. Thank heavens, my wife was gonna murder me if I didn't make any sales by this month. Uh, they're in here now. And this is the kitchen. If you pay attention to the walls, you'll notice that it hasn't even had one fire accident. Of course, if it had, the whole place would have surely burned down being in an apartment at all. I mean, of course it won't happen because y'all seem like uh, careful folks, right? I guess what I'm saying is, uh, fire safety is very important. An attic in an apartment, isn't it amazing? I think this floor is otherwise reserved for heating and uh, uh, utility units for the building. If something in the building explodes, I guess it'd probably be hit uh, pretty close. Jesus, Fred. Okay, I'm trying to feel spooked about the memory leap thing, but this isn't helping. Uh, how the heck do we get out of here? Probably have to go look for that brochure again. Something tells me that might be it. Just go back. I assume we'll, we should go back to like the end of the story. That's how it would work. So we go to where they said they would take the house and then we'll be good to go. Uh, is this it? It's not. Wait, what? Because you just fold it. What's the issue? Uh, I'm, if I'm guessing right. Yep. Okay, then. Being a memento, it's kind of odd that it came to be without us seeing. Huh. In any case, at least it's convenient. It didn't see- I didn't see another way out of this place. That makes me feel like I should go look for another way out of this place. Doesn't mean I'm going to, but whatever. What do we got? Puzzles! Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, can't move those at all. This is kind of confusing. Well, that'll give us three books. Um. Huh? Oh, did I like? Nah, I couldn't have messed up forever, right? Oh, wasn't expecting that, but okay. I'll take that. Activate memento, let's go. 